Boys and girls, this is Jeff Wu. We're back in San Francisco by popular demand. You guys love my conversation with Johnny Chang. So we have him back. We're taking him in San Francisco, Silicon Valley style. In this episode, as promised, Johnny and I are gonna give away a hundred bucks for our favorite comments on our last video. And we're gonna do the same thing for this video. The big thing that Johnny and I both have is that we wanna give value to the viewers of our content. This will be one of those things where you just don't just watch, like, and subscribe. Of course, we all appreciate that. We're also gonna have a chance to make money by being a part of our community. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. See you guys on the vlog. Jeff is like the plug. This guy's a genius. You gotta like actually eat L's along the way. I can be helpful, let me know. Business, business, business. Yeah. Jeffrey's mic'd up. Yeah. I think people, like people not from California think that SF, LA are kind of close. Yeah. I remember when I was like driving up from PV up to Stanford, I got two speeding tickets and one trip, so. That's crazy. <laughs> Cause you're just like, it's like, yeah, it's like a four or five hour, yeah. six hour thing. You're just like fucking gunning it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you feel real stupid when you get your first speeding ticket yeah. and then you keep going, you keep zooming again, you get that second speeding ticket all in like an hour. Yo, that's like, crazy, uh, bro. This is why Jeff can't be a criminal. <laughs> Why? Because he'd get caught. No, I'm just <laughs> so this is a uh, downtown San Francisco, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of dead, bro. Yeah, I, I uh, this is know. like heart of financial district. So That's nuts. If you want to see some real shit, let's go to the Tenderloin. And the Tenderloin, a neighborhood in downtown San Francisco that encompasses about 50 square blocks and is home to some of the highest levels of crime, drug addiction, and homelessness in the city. You just get used to like how raw it is right because yeah, just yeah. like a bunch of people loitering around they're all like kind of yeah got, that's true. yeah they got like literally nothing to do they just like <laughs> fucking eyeball you and you're like uh, right people are just like kind of mad dogging you're like yo yeah, just, yeah. Uh, just walking through trying to get my pho you know <laughs> the og pho spots turtle tower which is like northern hanoi style pho oh. which is like the thick noodle oh yeah yeah like it's I, uh, like it's in all like the, a lot of the food blogs. They shut down recently, so oh. I think a lot of these small businesses are. Why? Why is it? It's just is it just the economy? We should. Like... We should just. I mean, you want to walk through. It's just like. Oh, it's just. It's bad. a little bit of a war zone. I mean, I would go right. Like I was a regular, so like yeah, I yeah. like I know these people really well. It's just kind of sad that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over time, they just don't want to deal with it. Like a lot of like the Silicon Valley tech companies are just all based here. I always wonder what like these little what are, what are these little cars like? What, what is that? Do you know anything about that? It's like a Waymo, right? Huh? This is a Waymo car. What is that? Self-driving, like that's like let's see. Oh, it's, it is. Like I don't think there's a driver in there, right? There's no driver in there. No. Yo, that's nuts, bro. That is that is the Google Waymo car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never thought I'd be walking downtown San Francisco with the freaking tech geek. <laughs> and learning about Goldman Sachs and, you know, Bitcoin and whatever else, man. I'm, I was, came a long way from prison spread, I'll tell you that much, man, that's crazy. We all grow, we all evolve. Yeah, facts, bro. Jeff is like the plug. We would call him the plug in the hood, you know? He plugs people in. He's like that Will Ferrell in Get Hard. <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, see, this is... Yeah, here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, this is just San Francisco for you, dude. Like, weird fucking people like this. You see this happen all the time for, like... Yeah. I feel like you do this in, like, a Texas or a Florida. People are, like, kind of step in. Yeah, yeah. But I think in these big liberal cities, people just don't want to, like... Well, I don't know, man. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. gonna like, get it involved. Yeah. <laughs> Sad. I don't know. Yeah. That's why I do what I do. I feel like people need... They're so lost, man. Every time I look at people like that, honestly, I'm kind of shocked too. I'm like, dude, I think I was supposed to, I was like going that down that route at one point, you know, I'm like speaking with vulnerability here and humility, like I was definitely going down that route, you know, coked out of my mind, smoking meth, whatever, like to now just walking down the street with Jeffrey Wu. Dang, this is cool, man. Holy moly. Yeah, you got like the nice oh. waterfront. Yeah. It's cool. I, I think the natural beauty of San Francisco is world class. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Hog Island is a San Francisco classic. If you drive up to Marin, you can actually go to the oyster farm and like shuck oysters yourself. So super fresh local oysters. I mean, this is like classic San Francisco seafood spot. I see. I don't do oyster. I want to revoke your Asian part. <laughs> no, bro. I used, to, I used to. I used what, to. What's wrong with you? And then I got sick. Like I got food poisoning from it and it traumatized me, bro. 
I was like, I thought I was a gangster. Man, that thing had me just leaning over the freaking. He not willing to try again. All right, let's try it again. Let's do it. Okay. okay. That sounds like a challenge. <laughs> it is a challenge. Hey, yeah, yeah. I feel like for us Chinese, it's like you, we eat everything. That's true. And I think it's the joy of life, honestly. It's like, yo, I'm basically, I think I got over like the weirdness of it. I don't, I'm not trying to eat like insects and, and stuff, but I will try it. <laughs> I've gotten over the intellectual weirdness of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A bug is like a land lobster. It really is. Like if you think, if you think like lobsters are like such a class behind food, it's like yeah. is a scorpion it's, that weird. That's true, bro. All right, we're gonna make you. So this little thing is for the oysters. Yeah, the small fork. Okay. So this is the sweet water, high water. Yeah, local. I mean, I think this should be this should be fresh. I'm not, I don't. This is not some cheap. Some cheap SGV stuff. Yeah. Bottoms up, bro. Hold on, let me see. What's wrong with you? <laughs> the fuck happened to you? And it's fresh though. I mean, it's like it real fresh. fresh. I ain't gonna lie, it is fresh. Get too much lemon in your. I forgot that. I forgot the texture, bro. I forgot that it was. That texture was a little. I'm, I'm over here getting the smallest one, bro. <clears throat> Let's try this. That one's better. I can eat, like, just give me meat or seafood. Meat or seafood. Like, uni. Uni's fire. Give me funky stuff, honestly. Like, funky fermented so kimchi, kimchi. Raw spicy crab. Oh, Have you had that Korean raw spicy crab? Spicy crab? Fire. So good. Dang. But even just, like, give me, like, a medium rare ribeye, yeah, yeah, yeah. Need some tomahawk steak. They're for sure Chinese. Chinese, Chinese, man, this guy's. I think where French cuisine or a lot of European, European cuisines go wrong is that it gets sauce. so fancy on the sauce. Mm -hmm. like, like, they, like the French cuisine prides itself on the sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of like the Asian cuisine, the Chinese style, or like the Japanese style is like fresh some ingredient, yeah, yeah, the yeah. purity of the flavor. Like just steam, just give me a king crab steam, yeah. a little bit of garlic. Right, like a little bit of red vinegar, right? Like oysters. I don't need, just give me a little bit of vinaigrette. Like, don't yeah, yeah. put some crazy cocktail sauce all <coughs> over it. I like don't dunk my fresh seafood or, or meat yeah, with yeah. crazy sauces. Yeah. So don't, don't adulterate it for me. <laughs> just yeah. give me some abalone, right? Like, that's like a nice piece of seafood, right? Like, you can't, can't go wrong with like a, I mean, this is probably like a 10 year old animal. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> In Chinese cuisine, it's like a delicacy. It's like, <laughs> On like special holidays, Chinese New Year, it's just like love it, bro. It's mandatory. It's, it's expensive, fancy shit that you like host to like show uh, abundance to your friends and family. Right. So I think it was like a giant clam. It's like a very giant, rich, uh, nuanced clam. I mean, like I think abalone is like up there with shark's fin soup, right? I think. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's, like, it's Asian, not really PC Chinese. anymore to eat shark's fin soup. But I remember eating a ton of shark's fin as a kid growing up. Going to Hong Kong, eating really delicious shark's fin soup. I don't know, Peter. Don't cancel me, but like, yeah, I love all that stuff. Like, it just, it, like, I, I think when people criticize or talk about shark's fin soup, it's. Like, I think people in the West don't understand the appeal of shark's fin soup. It's not about the flavor, because yes, it is true that. Shark fin has no flavor. Yeah, it does. But the gelatinous fun. texture is very interesting. Yeah. So it's not about is it as pungent as like a uni or a, a ribeye steak? Yeah. Not really, but like the the texture is very unique. Just a little bit of vinegar to the red vinegar. Right, oh my gosh, bro. Super fire. Bro. <laughs> yeah, but you're absolutely right. The texture, the consistency, so good. It doesn't really taste like any. I mean, it has its own taste, obviously, but it's like. So it's a subtle taste, taste, but the, the broth is yeah, very the broth, rich. Yeah. What's the most you've ever spent on a meal? Ballpark. Look, I'm, I'm tr like when I was just starting to make money, I was just like a Michelin star nerd, just like geeking out, dick riding, the three star <laughs> chefs. After going through all of that, I think you just realize that food is food is food. Yeah. Like what I appreciate about meals now is just like sharing good conversation, experience with the people that I'm eating with. Like I don't need the Michelin. That's so biblical, what you just said. You don't know, but like, that's so biblical. Cause like, uh, in what way? breaking bread is really important. It's part of like the Last Supper. It's part, like, it's not about the food. Yeah. Cause it's like fish and bread. That's what Jesus fed people. Like yeah. the simplicity of it. But it was the heart being opened and shared. That's like, like you're saying the experience is really important. 
And I noticed that too. That's how I was saved was like, I smelled black bean noodles, right? Sajang Min, right? And yeah. then I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And then went in there and I was all like hardened. But then when I ate the food, it like softened me up. And I think food really like you taste people's culture, but it's like, not only that, you're like actually conversing and just opening your hearts and sharing this meal. And like, yeah, I think I, to what you were saying, I don't remember certain dishes, but I definitely remember certain conversations like over yeah. the dishes, you know what yeah. I mean? So. Yeah, that's facts, bro. Yeah. Do you speak Mandarin? Yeah, I mean, I think my Mandarin right now is probably a five-year-old level. Like, I can't express deep intellectual concepts, but actually, I mean, it was my first language. I, like, I had my grandparents with me as a kid. My, they would they would speak to me in Mandarin. When did you notice that you were bilingual, bro? I have like these like weird like I don't know if they're like fake installed memories, but I remember like when I was going to preschool, yeah. I was like crying a lot. It's like. So I was like speaking Mandarin to all the other kids and the teachers. And like, I was like a real crybaby as a kid. They don't understand me. It's like, it yeah. Was... But I think, I, kind of, I guess kind of the sad part is that I remember when I was in elementary school and I had like this explicit conversation in my own head where I would jumble Mandarin and English together. When like kids would like tease you and shit, you'd be like, I gotta fucking like clap yeah, yeah. back. And then you're like, I was really like, I was like, I was like, my brain was like going in like Mandarin, and, and now it's like kind of sad, because like I kind of look at it, it's like it's pretty sad, but like I remember like oh, I'm gonna only speak English now, like I told myself probably like six or seven, like I'm gonna default install English and yeah. not like I was like fuck like the Mandarin, yeah. like it, it made me not be able to speak, the clap back as quick, right? Because you're like oh fuck like yeah, yeah, English, yeah. China, China. Yeah. And, and you know like kids are mean, right? Kids are teasing you like. He was like, ah, I was like, Zhang Zong Wong, like, yeah, and you're like, yeah, you know, versus like, and then you're crazy. like, ah, fuck, like, fuck you. I yeah. mean, I wasn't saying F words, and yeah, it was like yeah, five, yeah. but I don't know if it's like UK, like, you were like, kind of pushing away your Chinese heritage. 100%, bro. Because I grew up around Hispanics, and yeah. all I heard was Chino, Chino, Chinito, Chinito. They had songs for us, bro. Chino, Chino, Japones. I can't say the rest, basically, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was like that. And I'm yeah. like, yo, that's. And I hated it. I, I remember one time I was like, Mom, why are we Chinese? And she's like, she, she responded in Mandarin. She's like, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, Mom, talk to me in English. Like, it was so bad, bro. I think the bullying honestly made me like have that, that like hatred and be like, I don't want to talk this. I don't want to look, I don't want to have a bowl haircut anymore. Yeah. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I just want to be cool, man. Like, this is not cool, yeah. right? Nowadays, though, I would say being Asian is kind of like a cool thing. We're like more accept accepted, yeah. I would say, you know, especially in the social media space. And also, like I see actors, shout out, Simi, is his name Simu, what is his name? Marvel Man? Yeah, Mar Marvel Man is Simu crazy. Lu. Simu Lu. Canadian guy? Canadian guy, yeah. Hey, Canadian guy, like sit down with us and let's like actually <laughs> talk how we can actually push forward Asian masculinity. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's something that, like, I think is actually really weird. Because I, I don't know, like, this is, like, openly talked about. But I feel like a lot of the Asian men that you see in Hollywood are very effeminate. Yeah. Or, like, bro. BTS. Like I, like, I love those Korean boys. Like, they're awesome. They're cool. But they're very effeminate. <laughs> like, no hate. Like, it's, like, out of pure love, like, I respect that. It's, like, like, you don't see, like, the rugged, tough Asian man. That's true. Like, you see, like, the... Like a fem, like they're like just yeah. wriggly and like super clean shaven and. I think a lot of them are also like either you're either like a comedian or like you're yeah, yeah very like pretty right pretty boy. Why but do you're you under think we're like that? Why do you think like we're, is it just like in our culture, bro? Because I was always taught to like don't lift your. I head. think it's part of the Chinese communist cultural revolution, where if you were stepped up, you got killed. If you stepped up in the cultural revolution, you were executed. So we selected yeah. for people that were low-key survivors. Dang. But I think that's like the beauty of America, where right. you and I are as American as anybody at fucking else. Yeah, yeah. That's like, I, I think a lot of my pride and, and confidence is that like, in the Constitution, you or me as American, as the, the people with seventh generation American from the Mayflower, we can't be Germans, we can't be Swiss, you can't be Danish. <laughs> But you and I can be American as much as any black American, any Latino American, any white American. Like we can actually all be 
bona fide Americans by blood, by birth, and we're a country of values, country of principles, country of law versus like worshiping a king or a queen or a, or a tribe. And I think there is like this tension around like what is America, right? Like I think a lot of the countries like, oh, I, we think America is terrible. And it's like, no, like there's, you and I cannot have the story in any other country in the world. No way. Yeah, the opportunity, the story, everything. <laughs> Jeffrey Wu for president. You guys hear that? <laughs> Jeffrey Wu for president, all right? <laughs> Above my pay grade. We see the gangster in Jeffrey, bro. Everybody's got a little bit of gangster in them, okay? Like, do you know, like, how your parents got here? Like, they are such badass gangsters that, like, come to a foreign country oh. with, like, a hundred bucks in their shoe yeah, yeah. and pull a life here, right? Like, I feel so sad when there are, like, native mainstream Americans who look at immigrants and are like, oh, they can barely speak English. It's like, yo, motherfucker, do you try to go to China and speak Chinese? <laughs> like, 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 they say, oh, ni hao, and like, yo, yeah. you sound like a, you sound like a moron. Like, but like Chinese people are not making fun of you, right? Like when people say like, konnichiwa, it's yeah, like, oh, yeah. like you're trying. Yeah. And I feel like when Asians come here, like, hey, they're trying to speak English. Their English is way better than you could speak Chinese or That's Japanese. Nice. Like you think a little bit further, like, hey, like the Bobs who come here actually are trying to learn the language, yeah. actually trying to assimilate. <clears throat> you put your American ass in China or Japan, and you, yeah. you can barely speak a lick of, lick of the word. Yeah. Like what is your family's like, journey here yeah same thing they came with literally like a hundred dollars in their pockets bro and no help no nothing my mom worked my dad worked he worked as a bus boy worked as all the work probably so, like probably just under the table yeah 100 percent cash under minimal way yeah. yeah and got like you know screwed there was times where they're like oh we didn't make it we didn't make much money today so we can't pay you can't Not pay problem. you and it's like what were you gonna go and to call the police on you know what i mean yeah. it's like so I've, I remember my parents going through that and it was hard. They came here for the American dream. We as Chinese people too, I don't know about Asians in general, but Chinese people are very like, they're, they're, they're scared of like shame. Yeah. So like, even though they're doing bad, like out here, they won't ask people for help back home. Yeah. They'll, they'll call. I remember like people calling my dad from like back home and they're, and they're like, how is everything? Do you need, oh no, it's great. We're like, bro, we're living in the projects. What are you talking about? It's great. Yeah. It's great. It's amazing, man. It really is a land of opportunity. And I'm like, what are you doing? Ask for help, but it just, we wouldn't do I it. I feel but. empathy towards that because I think my parents' generation, getting out of China was an accomplishment. Like you were respected to get out of China. Like America was this beautiful American dream. Yeah. But like, I know so many Chinese immigrants are, ah, they're like grinding it the fuck out. Yeah. I think part of like the story that I've just like come to understand about my family history is that I'm a fifth generation American. And like, it's like not like a straightforward line. My great, great grandfather came for the gold rush from That's Hong Kong. Crazy. And apparently all the Chinese immigrants from Hong Kong would basically make the riches in America, send money back home to their wife and kids, and then retire. Yeah. My great grandfather tried to follow in a great, great grandfather's footsteps, try to come to America, and he actually got banned from the country in the Chinese Exclusion Act. Oh, Remember in AP yeah, yeah, US yeah. history, you learned that like Chinese people are the only race explicitly banned by this country, yeah. by race. That's crazy. When people talk about discrimination, no one talks about Chinese being discriminated uh -huh. against, right? Like no one talks about like, we were the only race by race, yeah. no more. He got blocked at the border, got pushed on the Mexico, and then died of tuber tuberculosis in Mexico. What? So my grandfather was an orphan or, or, or grew up fatherless in Hong Kong with a single mother. That's, uh, that's a struggle. When people talk to me about like, oh, go back to where you're from, like, hey, I have roots in this country more than you do, right? Because you talk to like white people or black, whatever, right? Like their, their grandparents came here. No, my great, great grandfather came and made his American dream in this country. Damn. Like I had, like when you talk about struggle, like, my great grandfather got kicked out of the, like couldn't even enter the country for his American dream. Cause he, in that history book of the Chinese Exclusion Act was blocked at the border. He died of, of, of disease in, down in Mexico. When I understand like the struggles of my ancestors, no other group wanted to do the Western uh, railroads. It was the Chinese who built the Western railroads. So like it really rings, I think bittersweet to me because Leland Stanford made his wealth off the back of Chinese laborers building the railroads that connected California to the rest of America. And he became a billionaire, he became a governor. He was very anti-Chinese. 
He was the one who pushed all the anti-Chinese acts through. And I built a lot of my career and my Silicon Valley success going to Stanford. So I feel bittersweet about the whole thing because that man that I, that's my alma mater, built his riches off the back of Chinese laborers, blowing up dynamite through the Colorado mountains. And I think all of us have those stories, all that struggle that I would like, I think that's part of my strength where like, I know that my ancestors have gone through way worse discrimination and hate and struggle and people of our, of our ethnicity, of our tribe have suffered way more than me. Going around doing some business deals, <laughs> some mean person who's gonna call me some names or whatever. Dude, I can handle that every single day because I know that I'm a native born American, uh, the same production under the law as any other American. I probably make more money than you, I own more property than you, I pay more tax than you. So I'm more, I'm more of a stakeholder in America than yeah, yeah, yeah. 99% of you. <laughs> when people try to talk shit to me, like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm unbreakable. You can't break me. But I just know how tough my ancestors had to, sur had, had to survive like, to put me in the spot of where I am today. <clears throat> well, yeah, we all have that, that similar type of story of where family goes to struggle, you know, like Chinese especially. I mean, Hispanics can probably relate to. So my mind is still stuck on the tuberculosis, like dying in Mexico thing, bro. I'm like, holy moly, bro. That sucks and that's crazy. And you guys were still able to like build like generational wealth through that. I think it's pretty nuts, bro. Honestly, that's crazy. But I think that's like where the strength comes from because you just realize that I don't need anything. Like our people can survive on just rice. Yeah. Through the Chinese Cultural Revolution. Damn. Our people could be kicked out of the country. Our people could like just go die in Mexico. Yeah. And I don't need much. Like I, I think that's where like I have confidence that I, I can always win because you I don't need any of this shit. Like my people never needed any of this shit. Like if I earn it, I deserve it. I don't need it though. Like I will outwork you because I don't need it. Right? Like you don't need it. I don't need it. Like like to your fact, like I don't you need I don't need anything. I well, I'll fight Jesus. for my values. I will, but like, yeah, Jesus yeah. is free. Right. Exactly. You don't. You don't need right. anything. Like, free I, I think that's where strength comes from because you don't. You don't need to bend the knee to nobody. So true. Like you have, you bend the knee to your savior. You bend the knee to your your principles. That is where there's no money. Yeah. I don't owe anybody anything. That's so if you don't know anybody anything, you're unstoppable. Yeah. Come kill me. Sheesh. Dang, this guy. I told you guys, Jeffrey Wu for president. <laughs> Hey, thank you. <laughs> What's up, my brother? Happy Look birthday. Bro, bro. Look at the fucking king. You're the king. Media mogul, Jeffrey Wu. My buddy, Johnny. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Mark, Mark, great to Mark, meet you. Good to meet you, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Coming. I feel like I've seen you on Jeffrey's Instagram, is that right? Hey, probably yeah. seen him on YouTube I going viral himself. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. I, was, I was locked up from the age of 12 to 25. And, um, you know, I got out. I'm 34 now, but I've been helping out people just like, like re-entry, helping them lifers in prison and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm Christian now. So I basically, prison awesome. minister. Where yeah, were yeah. you in prison? So I went to Mississippi and then I was in Lancaster State Prison and Ironwood State Prison. So like on the border. Ironwood of Blythe. Yes. Dude, Blythe. I was born in Blythe. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. Wow, My world. fifth grade field trip was to the prison. Oh, really? Yeah. That's crazy, bro. You see this guy in there? No. <laughs> Imagine. It's crazy. I just like this community that you're born in. That's it changes so the trajectory. Yeah, absolutely. Like I grew up in Section 8 project housing. Yeah. And then he grew up in Palos Verdes, right? But then it's crazy how we're like all in the same room. I think you carry, it's it's definitely responsibility. Like yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. like, even though I have the CCW, I don't like carrying that often. Yeah. It, it like it, like it, it forces vibe. you in a spot. Cause like, yeah. I don't know if someone is robbing someone else, like do I want to step in? Like it forces a decision. Yeah. Like, yo, I'm not trying to sign up to be, I'm not a police officer. I'm not a, I'm not yeah, James yeah. Bond, I'm not 007 yeah, here. Yeah. Exactly. But then you had like, you could change the outcome. Yeah. I don't think you walk around expecting to be in a gun battle. Right. You respect everybody's Second Amendment rights, though. I think it's just foundational to American culture. One, and then two, there's just no universe where the government's going to be able to take all the guns off the streets. Yeah, there's no way. So if this is not possible, then I want law-abiding citizens to be able to defend themselves. That's facts, bro. 
And especially with half our cities being more and more dangerous and police responses are getting more and more muted or more, you know, police officers can't do their job. We can't be a society where good people can't defend themselves. Yeah. Because criminals are not gonna follow laws. They're gonna always have weapons. I just don't like a society where everyone's forced to be weak, forced to be emasculated. I get this question a lot where people are like, you know, Johnny, you're a two strike felon. You can't have a gun anymore. What do you, and you have ops like literally in the streets still. What do you do? Like, how do you protect yourself? You know what, what I mean? What do you mean you have ops in the street? Like basically like you people, still have- People have t a target, they have a target on you? I mean, there's times where because of my gang, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like just because I became Christian doesn't mean that they forgive me. You know, Jesus forgives, but how I answer that always is, <clears throat> you know, I believe that God honestly like protects me, you know, through everything, right? And there's been some crazy stories where like, I've met people who I have like, hurt their families and stuff like that. And, you know, um, we're just victims and they've like forgiven me after like watching my interviews, watching my soft white underbelly. So you don't feel like even that. that you're still, you don't feel like any of those sins or bad blood is gonna carry forward. I don't, I really don't. I think because I'm really just not about that. Like I don't, I don't push that negative energy anymore. And it even says in the Bible, like what helps me get through is it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So it doesn't say like there will be no weapons, right? It says no weapon formed, right? Yeah. So there's still going to be people who are going to hate. There's still going to be people maybe who dislike me for me, but they cannot prosper. Like that's yep. what God says. So I'm like <laughs> living with that type of uh, heart and just, just, I feel like it really helps me like in my day to day, just believing that God will will help me, you know? Ooh, this 90 degree incline, bro. I gotta, well, we gotta do a workout together. I'll sh let's show, you're breathing. I'm, yeah. I'm chilling, bro. <laughs> Devin is fucking chilling too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on a shape. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. No, I, I think that's actually like, it's actually very popular in Silicon Valley to do walk meetings. And I feel like at some of these meetings, it's like uh, you test people's cardio. Cause you, yeah, these are pretty steep hills. Like yeah, they don't show the hills. They're just like, you're going kind of straight up. And <laughs> it's like one of those like nerd dick measuring contests. Like, yo, how, how's your fucking cardio, dude? If you can't walk up a hill, you can't build a billion dollar startup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but we're entering Chinatown here. It's Lunar New Year this month. So this is like the wow, original Chinatown yeah, yeah, of yeah. America. Yeah, dim sum out here. I mean, how does this compare to LA Chinatown? I've spent a little bit of time in LA Chinatown. I feel like LA Chinatown, I think it's kind of a touristy thing in yeah. San Francisco. A lot yeah. of, you can kind of look around, like a lot of people are walking through. It's, like, no, it's, it's actually quite busy. I've never seen this much foot traffic in SF in a while. Back in the gang days, would you actually hit up the Tong houses? I don't know if that's even like public or people talk about it, but yeah. like- They don't really talk about that stuff. I think it's like just- Like it hush hush? You know our culture, bro. It's, it's you know, been kind of disconnected from all that, especially Northern California, different politics. Southern California is all gang banging. Yeah. They move more like the mob. We move more like the gangs. We're the foot soldiers, you know? So, yeah. So that was reputation? That's what the watching was. Watching were literally foot soldiers for the triads, for the tongue, at least out here, especially. Interesting. Uh, we would do all the dirty work. Dang, bro, this is strange. <laughs> Chinatown vibes, let's go. Let's get this money. <laughs> Yo, they got the poppers and everything. I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Yo. Oh, I'm okay. They're trying to make me play, bro. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm gonna be breaking that. Wow, this is crazy. No, this this Chinatown is way more booming. No disrespect to LA, but <laughs> this Chinatown is way more booming. Yeah, no, there's actually stuff going on. Jeez. Yeah, I think LA, Chinatown seems, it, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of people actually live there, right? It feels right. like yeah, in it's LA, space, it's pretty no. disparate into San Gabriel Valley. Yeah, and there's a lot of like Hispanics there too. Chinatown is like half, half like Chinese, half, you know, but I think Hispanic. like the trendiest spot in Chinatown in LA is that hot chicken place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. is that hot? Like it feels like it's being slowly gentrified. Yeah. Versus I think like, I don't know how it works in San Francisco real estate, but like, this is like pretty good location in San Francisco, right? Like we were just walking a few blocks from my yeah, place yeah, on yeah. in financial district. Yeah. Boom, you're just like a heart. Like this, is, we're in like freaking Hong Kong now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Seriously. The one thing that about Asian restaurants is like these washed out pictures and stuff. They never update their pictures, bro. It's crazy. 
These are there since 1974, I bet you. <laughs> Johnny Chang, business advice. <laughs> oh, I seen you on that Jubilee video. Oh, good to meet you. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. You gotta, you gotta run into some people. <laughs> like, I'm really happy as someone who loves San Francisco to just see the streets come back. Yeah. When I left San Francisco in 2021, it was straight up apocalypse now. Uh, what's that Will Smith movie when he was like the last man living? Um, legend, I am legend. legend. I am legend. It felt yeah. like I am legend. Oh. Like I remember walking around when there was like BLM riots, protests, like just, yeah, that was just walking the streets, dude. I was just like, and there's also when a lot of the, the California forest fires were happening. Yeah. So I felt like I was an I am legend in San yeah, Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really happy that, you know, yeah, yeah. three, four years passed, we see this bustling city coming back to life. Look, Fook is uh, a big Hong Kong jewelry <laughs> franchise in Hong Kong. I thought when you said, look, Foo, no, 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 you no. meant like, like some LA San Gabriel Valley sign, like, hey, look, I think Foo. it stands for like six luck in Chinese, like, Fu, liu, yeah, fu. like Liu Fu. Oh, Liu yeah, Fu is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But luck is ba, right? Like ba, ba, ba. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight. So that's, that's why, crazy. like, when you see Chinese people, they like the number eight. Yeah. Like eight, eight, eight. But it's kind of weird because, like, some people think it's like eight, eight is like Hitler related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like when Asian, when Chinese people are saying eights, it's for luck, right? Not Nazi stuff. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I like seven and nine. Those are kind of my favorite numbers. Seven, seven, seven is like Christian. Seven is so the, like don't the... Christians like threes? They like threes Trinity? too. Trinity, but seven as well. Why seven? Seven is the seventh day, the Sabbath day where Jesus rests. I mean, where God rests, you know? Okay. So yeah. There's a golden dragon. I don't know if that's it, but that's the golden dragon restaurant. That's nuts. If that's the one, they were in there trying to do some crazy stuff. Man. So people were murdered in here. Pretty much, yeah. Like innocent bystanders too, oh, which is sad. But this is so like Chinatown. So this is like really how it should be, I feel like, honestly. So look at like, like I feel like downtown, yeah, LA Chinatown is not like this. Yeah, not at all, bro. Not at all. Like it is kind of cool to just see that architecture. Yeah. Like, like look at that building. It's just kind of cool that this exists. Yeah. There's Cam Luck Restaurant, which yeah. is downstairs. There's Hunan House here, and then there's there's yeah, I want to try seafood. and seafood hot sauce. Yeah, and then on top of that, I don't know what, uh, man, that's nuts, bro. Yeah, we're illiterate. We cannot read this for you. Yeah, this would be like what the Tong stuff would look like. Should I, you go I, back? I should we walk by the Tong building? I think Johnny doesn't want to talk too much about it, but if you Google Tong Wars, Chinatown, Gang Wars, yeah. the Tongs were kind of the HQs of all this stuff, so. I mean, what's the reputation for Hop Singh? Is this like a... I mean, I, I don't know. I've, I've heard they're pretty crazy, though. I mean, every, it's each their own. Every gang has... You know, every organization has their their 15 minutes of fame. They all have crazy people. They all have that. So, I mean, I, I don't ever underestimate. I respect all neighborhoods, and I really think that yeah. But I've I've heard that name rings bells even in San Gabriel Valley. Okay, yeah. so that's like a has a loud reputation. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think most gangs do. Honestly, to be real with you, like most gangs will have at least had something, especially in prison. Maybe not on the streets, but rep in prison is a big thing. I definitely walked by this. We're gonna swing by Hop Sing Tong. I mean, that's Hop Sing Tong. Shout out Hop Sing. So this, uh, this is a spot. Yeah, There's probably like multiple gunfights out here. I mean, it's crazy, bro. And then you have like a bakery and a little like noodle spot right underneath. Do so you think it's like gentrified, or do you think it's absolutely in every in all parts, even LA, it's gentrified? Because I'm sure that like the feds, the U.S. government knows like you can't be running. You can't be running stuff out of, of here. Of course, of course. What do you think like like people have converted this to? Like just community centers? I wish I could read it in Mandarin. Probably tells you what it is. Man, I feel like that's the part I'm like, yo, we're shameful. Yeah. We're shameful. Seriously, <laughs> sorry. We we're, we're, we're a disgrace to our Yeah. We lost our mother tongue. <laughs> our mother tongue is English because we're friggin' Americans, okay? <laughs> Don't judge. Don't hate. We're Americans in Asian bodies. <laughs> I love how quiet our people are. Like, no one's gonna come up to us and go, oh, wow, you're filming. You know, it's like, they just, our people are always just reserved. We do our own thing and I'm tatted down and no one's even, I mean, they look, but they're not like. Yeah, it's, it's gone on here. You know, it's crazy. Yo, this looks like the cut right here. PTSD. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. <laughs> like what, no. these are the alleyways where you get a little bit like. I'm pretty sure, I mean, it looks sketch, bro. This is where it just, you know, it would seem like, you know, <laughs> this would be like, catch me in the back, you know, we telling you, hear you, people, uh, I think you, you hear people playing mahjong. Yeah. <laughs> no, you really. 
Yo, Pong. Pong, no, I'm just kidding. Look at but look at how sketchy it. Explain it, explain it, explain it. So like, you know, Mahjong is, is, it's like old grandmas be gambling, but there are those like gambling dens back in the day. Sounds like it's yeah. not back in the day. Yeah. Sounds I like know. it's happening right now. I mean, you hear the chips and shit, no? Be careful, Devin. Let's not poke our camera too deep in there. I don't know anything but Jesus. <laughs> but it's just, it's just like, it looks sketchy. Like, you, like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> He's like looking. See, I'm a little looky-loo, okay? I'm just curious. <laughs> Young friendly, trying to learn. If we're not doing it justice, we apologize. It didn't turn into that. We're just, we're just walking and, and, and pushing out the culture. But shout out SF people. Shout out the Bay. Respect, general. respect. Like, there is something special about just like plugging to, okay, these were what my people thought about. Yeah. 5,000 years ago, right? I think right. when you hear about elder Chinese, they talk about 5,000 years of history. Yeah. Right? America is what, sub 300 years old? Yeah. Exactly. And maybe people are saying that, hey, America might be on the teetering of just like blowing up. And yeah, yeah. So I think there is something that our people should be proud of, of yeah, having yeah. 5,000 years of contigu continuous history. Yeah. And also Americans too, if you're sub 300 years and what we've accomplished in those 300 years is pretty crazy to be like a top world power to yeah. do all that too. Like hats off to them too, you know? That's one thing my dad says, he's like, he respects it too. And I don't say it as them, I think of it as us. Cause I, I see myself as American first that's and facts. foremost. Dang, that's facts. Right, cause I don't yeah. like, cause I don't even want to, cause I say that because I don't even want to see that I'm not American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you should not feel like you're not right, of, course. of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My passport, they have passport with me. Right. My passport <laughs> is American, born here, right? Like under the rule of law, I'm as American as any one of y'all. So, and I think that's the beauty of America, right? Like any other country, I couldn't be that. Yeah. I couldn't be Swiss. I couldn't be Egyptian, yeah. right? Yeah. You can't be yeah, Japanese. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, we're a couple blocks down. We were in basically Hong Kong and now we're <laughs> in Union Square kind of fancy shopping district of San Francisco. Yeah, so you got yeah. like the fancy Apple store. Nike is actually just right here. And our people built the Apple store too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, the Gucci's and, and whatnot, the Louis Vuitton's are down there. And I think when you saw the riots, like these were the shops being, these are the shops being broken into. Yeah, 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 the SFPD. I used to be much more in touch with the local police because I had an office right between Union Square and Tenderloin, which we're heading out to, I had a viral moment with local TV because yeah. there was a fight outside my office yeah. and someone's getting their head stomped. Oh, dang. And I, I like was basically like, look, I'm a small business owner. Dude, the fucking street crime is ridiculous. Yeah. Like this is not politics for me. This is just straight up like, yeah. can't have my employees walk into the office and people are getting their head stomped outside yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my door. Yeah. And then I had like a bunch of local TV come by and then like the police captain came through and local policy matters. That's why I think when a lot of times we spend a lot of energy talking about national politics, Biden, Trump, whatever, it's like, yes, that's very important, but we just want the local laws enforced. So you can't have street crime, you can't have people beating each other, we can't have people looting, you gotta put bad people away. And then you can be rehabilitated like Johnny, right? Like I'm super law and order, yeah. but I think Johnny say, paid his time, is a changed man. He's doing good for society. I'm not judging his past because he's already paid. You don't double pay. He's already paid. I agree. So, so that's why like, I feel like we should have this message more where it's like, I'm super tough on crime as we should be because you have to have punishment in this world. Yeah. But once they pay their dues, it is, you're rehabilitated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, laws is again, something that's temporary. You can choose to break it. You can choose to follow it. But I think spiritually, like, when there's really something spiritual, some, someone experiences true spiritual change, I think that in itself is like, you just shift everything from the foundation. You know, of course we have to have our moral laws and everything else, but if a person just isn't happy inside, like no amount of law or anything is gonna like stop them from doing what they're gonna do and acting out, I think it's a byproduct of like, just being sad inside and being messed up inside. And we do need, you know, some, some, I don't know, delegate some resources, however we do it. And this is what I'm doing out here, is just preaching the gospel, trying to help people really change. Does you know? law enforcement try to tap in or to you? And like, yeah, I, I'm sure they like appreciate the message. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The, the pe even law enforcement, they have it hard too. A lot of the times their hands are tied. Well, I think just you're seeing, or walking through SF. For people not used to, I'm used to this. And like, you just see 
people like I don't know. I, I don't know what's wrong with them, but uh, sad. No one bothered. I, I just like yeah. I, I I appreciate that some of the smaller town vibes of what I see in like smaller towns in America. That would just not happen. But in San Francisco, that is just every other street corner in this area. So we're gonna probably see more of that. Gongcha, have you had Gongcha boba? It's fire, bro. Yeah, we can come back. Yeah, yeah. that's some Let's gang members sipping boba. Back in the day, the boba shops. You guys know this from the San Gabriel Valley, LA, LA County, East Side. You guys know that the boba shops was cracking back then. All my, my Mexican homies <laughs> would be like, hey, if we want to find you guys, we just go to the boba shops. <laughs> the Chinese gangs were hanging out the boba shops. Yeah, shop. Chinese Vietnamese gangs. You guys know. You guys know you was walking like this, sipping on boba. No, nah, I feel like it's little <laughs> cute white girls just go, oh, let's go to the boba yeah, now. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like real. Real soft, real soft now. Yeah, as they're sipping it, they're like, K-pop. It's like, no, that's actually not K-pop. But, uh, you know. I mean, I think that's what we were talking about. Like, do you actually think Asian stuff is being cooler now? 100%. Like, I, I don't. What do you mean? It's always been cool. <laughs> they're serving definitely more of our culture, I think, in the algorithms. And it's a beautiful thing. You know, BTS, all that stuff has been big, but now it's just getting served. People are doing mukbang. Mukbang is Korean. <laughs> It's such a beautiful thing, you know, to see that all interweave together. I think our <clears throat> culture doesn't get a lot of light, you know, shined on it. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Like, it's happening, bro. We're, we're, we're getting, I don't know if you could say we're getting cooler, but it's like, it's just like, there's more, more of an audience now that's like, uh, yeah. you know? I, I, I'm going to give you the cynical, the cynical take. Yeah. I think we're becoming cooler because we're getting richer. <laughs> I think if you actually look at spend, Asians are the most successful demographic in America, yeah. right? If you look at income, it's Asians on top, Indians on top, yeah. right? White, everyone else below. And I don't know if it's cool. I would like to think it's about culture and depth and coolness, yeah. but the cynical capitalist in me is like, it's business, right? Like mm -hmm. Asians got money to spend, money drives attention, and you want Asians to spend on your stuff? Well, you gotta cater towards Asian sensibilities. It's a little bit of both, but I think the fundamental thing is that the actual genuine culture needs to come from folks like yourself. Yeah. Like I think the Hollywood Asian stuff, I think is so fake, <laughs> so stereotypical. Yeah. I hate it. Anyways, we're walking into some real shit now. Oh yeah, this is like Skid Row. -y. All right, vlog. If this is too shady, we can peel off and. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you feel more on alert. It feels like home, baby. I like being in places like this. It's weird. And I don't know if that's a traumatized thing or whatever, but this feels like home to me, as crazy as that yeah. sounds, you know? I feel like some of the folks watching. Oh yeah, definitely. So. <laughs> yeah, they're watching us, we're watching them. That's just and we're all watching each other and you guys are watching us. Keep us safe, vlog. Yeah, you can get a picture. Absolutely, absolutely. You guys are all in the vlog now, so it's all good. Oh yeah. Shout out to everyone. So crazy. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Get a few. There you go. Yes. Of course, of course. See you guys. Good to meet you guys. Good to meet you guys. Oh, that's Glad so you made their day. Amen. That was, Amen. I, I, I was, that was good energy, man. That was fun. <laughs> Who would know in the in the hood like this? Huh? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she said, you know, she was inspired and that I inspired her to preach more and to post more reels on Instagram, putting out positive content. Cause that's the thing that we face as Christians is like ridicule. You know, our friends will be like, oh, you're Christian now. I don't want to hear that. Shout out to you, sis. For sure, man. I love taking photos of my friends with like their fans. Yeah, yeah. I, I always think it's like the cool, funniest thing. If you're a friend of mine and you have fans come up, I will be your photographer. <laughs> that's a true friend, guys. But that's a true friend. That's and tight. then we're walking through. So we walk through Tenderloin. Yeah, yeah. It is still technically part of Tenderloin. But it's like Little Saigon, where a lot of the best Vietnamese restaurants are. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're doing a little shutdown, street shutdown here too. But they got the karaoke going, that's Honestly, crazy. San Francisco City should be pay me for being an ambassador. <laughs> like we're just showing the street light. <laughs> we have the Chinatown celebration. We got the Little Saigon celebration yeah, down yeah. here. We got some OG yeah. Chinese New Year celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, so, why aren't we wearing red? I know, I should have wore some red, bro. So red is a lucky color for Chinese. Like celebration, yeah. luck, everything. Absolutely. Johnny wants to be Irish today. Yeah, 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 let's do it. The green and yellow. Oh, Brian. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we can have like a two hour fucking vlog and just like see the runtime. 
Like, I, just, like, I wonder if people, like, I think people might just watch the whole fucking thing, you know? <laughs> like, let's leave it on. Anyways, yeah, yeah. this is Fuzzy former spot of Turtle Tower, so. Oh. Yeah, this used to be the best fuss spot. I was a regular here for like 10, 15 years. Really sad. Like, like SF is, is struggling. Like, there are some hot spots, but really, like, like the best fun I've had. So it's really sad to see these small businesses have to leave. Yo. You guys open? <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, for sure, sis. Appreciate you. I love supporting the small businesses, man. Yeah, for sure. They're like Cantonese, Vietnamese. Can you speak Cantonese? Nah. Only the bad words. When I order my pho, I like only like the steak, the tripe, and the tendon. Yeah, that's the heart. You want something? No more tendon. No more tendon. Uh, we'll do we'll do steak, meatball, and tripe. Thank you. Can I get a lot of lime? Okay. Also, thank you. A lot of lime. Thank okay. you, brother. Appreciate you. How do you like your pho? Let's, let's explain pho to the vlog. It's like a comfort food for me. I don't know what it's like for Americans, but like to a lot of. It's like Asians, like pho is just like a classic comfort food. Yes. I think to me, it's almost like even more comfort food than ramen. I think people, they see a lot of like instant yeah. ramen, but it's just like a cleaner, lighter. Yeah. It's not as heavy. Definitely not, not as yeah. heavy. It, yeah, I think um, it's really good. We, we it, a lot of us take it as like hangover soup. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It's really good. It's special. Oh, thank you. Thank you, bro. First dish, what do we got? Who do we got? A beef spring roll. Yeah. Special here. Lemongrass. They said lemongrass beef. Let's try it out. Mmm, they're so warm. No, that's fire. Thank you, thank you. So this here, it has like raw, you know, steak in it. It cooks as, you know, as they bring it out because the soup is so like hot. So we grab here. Most of us just grab it by hand, but we'll be civilized today. Grab it, put it in. Bean this sprouts. Bean sprouts. This is for you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> These are basil leaves. Basil leaves, you. how I do it is just little by little, break it in. Make sure you wash your hands, be hygienic, people. Yeah, I think it's basically like an aromatic soup with bean sprouts, basil. I, I, I go heavy on the basil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just dump it in. I'm dump too lazy to get the, the stems thing. out. Oh, yeah, no. And then... No stems, no seeds, no sticks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> do you guys use any limes? Like, do one lime. One lime? I'm a one lime guy. I do as much as I can. As much as I Are you I trying can. to avoid scurvy? Are you part of the British Navy? Yeah. No, I was actually curious. Like, why do you, you like to just get it real sour? I just like it real sour, bro. I like it lemonade pho, bro. That's how I like it. I think this is the cool thing about, like, this type of uh, the pho experience. You can basically customize jalapeno, basil, yeah. bean sprouts, how much lime you want. Yeah. I think uh, one thing I like about this spot too is like the noodle here is the, uh, the thick noodle. Yeah. Have you seen it? You, you usually That's get like the, northern, uh, the northern style. The northern style, yeah. yeah, yeah. What my grandfather see, uh, used to teach me is you gotta, you gotta just get the sip of the broth first, just gotta see the flavor. Nice beef bone broth. And then you gotta, Johnny's still putting in limes. Do you want one lime? You can have it. All right, for sure. Do you like the ho hoisin sauce? I love the black sauce, bro. Hoisin sauce. So I don't, I fire. used to go ham on it. Black and red. I just go red. This is how much I put in. And a little more. <laughs> that, that, no, I, now like I say, like, that's kind of absurd. Like, yeah, you guys, don't recommend. Low this class. Is that, this is low class. <laughs> this is that prison spread, bro. Instead of dumping it in, I'm gonna do the classy way. You gotta have that little side dish for the sriracha. You do, uh, you do the little dip, the dip. So you get, the, you get, you get, you place it a little bit on it. That sounds like a lot of work, bro. I thought it was work harder, work smarter, not harder. It's called appreciating the cuisine and the and the ingredients of the food, not just dump a bunch of. <laughs> a bunch of brown sauce in your broth. <laughs> These folks spent hours cooking. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually facts. Sorry, guys. I think especially like on kind of like a cloudy, rainy day, San Francisco day, like this, mm -hmm. it's a spot. Hit us up. We'll take out the pho if you're a lucky winner, I guess. I don't. We gotta do some giveaways and yeah, eat we'll pho. Like we'll take them to, out to eat. The waiter, like he, I heard him speak Vietnamese. I heard him speak Mandarin and Canto. 
and English, bro. Like, the fact that our people are so, like, resilient, I think it's such a beautiful thing, you know, to see that. It's just, like, I respect that, man. To speak four languages, I'm, I struggle speaking two languages, you know? So it's, like... It's Honestly, crazy. I think a lot of Americans can barely speak English. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Facts. You can't get the grammar correct. Yeah. Can't speak no English. Put some respect on our Asian elders. Let's go. Shishi. He like me, what do you do? Wow. 32 years has been in America. Wow, it's in the. You said, uh, Yuan Hua Chao, Tuiba. Ah. So from from Vietnam, but born. Yeah, yeah. What the fumo is Han Guo Hua Chao. Tui, Han Guo, Tui. So I'm going to be Jao. Han Guo, you. Bu, bu. Jogo, Jogo. What the Baba is Shanghai. That's a what, what boy, Jang Guan Hua. What the Baba is Vietnam. Do you like to sing? Oh. You speak Spanish? He's a poly guy, yo. Correct, I'm sorry. Espanol? Really? Poquito? Well, I worked on research, 20 years, I worked together. Oh, yeah. that's why, yeah, yeah. So you have to learn a lot, yeah, yeah. Okay, shishi, shishi, shishi. That's hard, bro. <laughs> These five languages, like... He's working down the mission, which is kind of, it used to be a, a Latino, Hispanic neighborhood. He got gentrified a lot, too. So. Yeah. Hey, you ever get into a street altercation? In recent, no. It's been a while. No I mean, one tries to press you. Nah. Even crazy people. Nah, don't, like, nah, nah. Like, I think for me, like, I don't think... It's just like, like, it's over like 10 years, like two instances just like walking around San Francisco yeah. over 10 years to hit that. I think it's like, you just talk to people that have lived here for years. Everyone has a story of themselves or a friend who's gotten mugged or beaten up. Yeah. I don't think people like to talk about it because people want to hold a brave face or not talk down on homeless people. But yeah, yeah. folks who actually have lived in San Francisco, they can tell you, everyone knows a person who's gotten beat up, mugged. Yeah. Personally, or a friend. One of my business partner's cousins got her French bulldog puppy stolen. <laughs> and it's what? really sad. It made the news. I'm just like, that's imagine crazy. if someone just stole your dog, beat yeah, you up, and stole up. your dog. Damn. I want the city to be safe and happy, but there's real problems. I mean, we just walking by, like, <laughs> you gotta have a little bit of a, on a, its head still on a swivel. Yeah, definitely. Oh, what the heck? More stuff Protest. in San Francisco. <laughs> Free Burma. Oh, the Burmese people. Okay. Not my, I don't know much about it. Yeah, yeah I have no hot takes on this really, one. I have no hot takes on yeah, this one. I don't know what this is. Put in the comments below, guys, what are they talking about, you know? Yeah. I see Free Burma, Burmese people, Myanmar people. Shout out to them. Been locked up with a lot of people. Very good people. Family-oriented people, but I'm confused. <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. So this is actually Twitter. Oh, that's Twitter? What the heck? Uh, we would do weekend. Hackathon projects. Yeah, yeah. I don't think people at Twitter work that hard. They just crash in that office there, do some work. <laughs> All those guys that were tinkering in projects, they're they're crushing it. So, yeah. OG startup people hacking out of kind of how Silicon Valley works. These people getting paid six figures, seven figures at these big companies. Yeah. They're working so slowly. Yeah. You're bored on the weekend. You have your friends come over, hack on side projects. It feels like the, part of that energy is coming back to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. But it is wild. I'm sure to hear that, like, yeah, these people are making literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of years of salary. Yeah. But they're bored. <laughs> like the companies are not using them to their fullest talent. Yeah. So they're like always tinkering on side projects and like literally That's hanging crazy. out at the Twitter office on weekends, hacking on side projects with these guys. That's wild, bro. I would never know that. I, I'm assuming they're over there like grinding and busting, finding fulfillment in their lives, you know? Do you think being too smart and like too efficient like that is a curse? Like, do you think, like, they're always searching for the next, like, you, 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 you know, like, I don't know. No, I've, I've had conversations about this, not to be er or conceited, but yeah. you cannot unknow. Mm -hmm. So it's not even a choice. Like, if you know you could do more, you could be more productive, you can't go put yourself back in, like, Pandora's box is open to possibilities. Yeah. And I think that's, like, the crazy thing. So I think when we're all kids, we all have dreams, we all have this ambition to be astronauts, to solve math, math millennial problems. Yeah. Like we have all these big dreams and then you've graduated college and like, hey, go be a software engineer to A, B, test the color of this button, have the conversion rate on this ad to convert more than this other ad yeah. to sell some makeup from fucking Kim Kardashian or Kylie Jenner, right? Like, like some of the smartest minds 
in our world is like, hey, algorithmically show the Johnny Chan, Jeff Wood podcast over the hopefully stupid TikTok bikini model dance, yeah, yeah. right? And hopefully <laughs> our content rises. Right. But literally some of the smartest machine learning data scientists are in there tinkering with these algorithms to serve more content for people. And I think that fulfills to some extent of making a good healthy living, great benefits, great catered food. But I think after a certain point, you're like, is this the most meaningful thing? Yeah. And it is wild that like, if you think about business models of a Facebook or a Google or a Twitter or a TikTok, yeah. it's algorithmically serving up content in which to monetize your eyeball. I think that is like the existential question of a lot of Silicon Valley, yeah. for better or for worse. The algo is serving up content that you explicitly choose to engage with. Yeah. Like I think when people say, oh, TikTok's trying to brainwash you, it's like, yeah. look, if you are clicking on <laughs> dumb stuff yeah. of like <laughs> hot chicks or trans people, I mean, you are training the algo to serve it to you more. Like it's not trying to brainwash you, it's just trying to serve you more watch time. So when there's weird stuff <clears throat> popping up in your feed, don't blame the algo, blame yourself for engaging with weird stuff. So when people say, oh, I'm getting served up a bunch of weird propaganda, it's like, you're just telling me that you like watching that stuff. You might be hate watching that stuff, but you are watching that stuff. Mm. Take the next level understanding of how these algos work. They're not trying to brainwash you. They're trying to extend watch time in which to serve you more ads in which they make more money. Yeah. So it's a business play, not a brainwash play. Wow. So when I hear a lot of these people pontificating about, hey, TikTok's trying to brainwash your children to be fucking crazy, woke SJW people. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's just, you're <laughs> clicking that stuff and watching it and making, training the algo to serve up more of that content for you. I think if they want to have a conversation around, um, hey, should we be serving up science content, math content, yeah, yeah. more religious content? I think yeah. that's a fair discussion to have. Yeah, I think that is a tension of freedom of speech. Do you want government to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, we're only going to serve up Christian values, math values, and science values, yeah. which is basically what communist China is yeah, doing right. for serving up math yeah. content in their TikTok. Yeah. And I think it's like a fair d debate, right? Like, do you want a single party dictate of types of content you should be watching? Yeah. Or do you want a little bit of a marketplace of competition of ideas? So to me, it's like, hey, I think I'd rather prefer a free discourse in a competition of ideas yeah. where our voices can't compete with the low brow content of TikTok dances and bikini models, yeah. but hopefully, our content rises to the top because it adds more value over the long term. Amen. Versus like, hey, the government forces math science content, yeah, which yeah. you might be bored about, but maybe you can feel good about, oh, we're saving our kids from not doing TikTok dances, but teaching them algebra. But Somebody got lit up. Jeez. You get some PTSD flashback? Yeah, absolutely. Pops rolling up Every on you? Every time I hear, really? Ooh, I was like, I gotta look. I always think it's important to see parts that, you know, I don't know, like, People who haven't been in the streets, who think like LA and San Fran is just like super chill, techie stuff, like. Or a Hollywood. Or Hollywood, yeah. right. Like Beverly they think Hills. It's like, oh, it's Beverly Hills, you know? It's like, no, it's really crazy, you know? And uh, struggle is everywhere. I think, again, we're all interconnected through the struggle. So it's really cool to kind of like walk through. It's very humbling, kind of sad sometimes just to see a lot of people kind of being like slumped over like that, you know, seeing quite a few people like that. But at the at the end of the day, it also makes me like thankful, like that group that just ran up to us, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. like we love God. And I'm just like, wow, it's weird. It's like, I think you need to see stuff like to this extreme. to appreciate, yeah, to appreciate what's good, right? Because how are you going to know if something is clean if you don't know what dirty is, you know, how are you going to appreciate wealth if you were never poor, right? So. I think it's really important to see the extremes for sure. Yo, yo, bro. I can't believe that dude just called you Kumar, even though you're Harold. He did a drive-by. Drive-by Kumar. Yeah. He's like, Kumar. Yeah, I have like, I, I have like a couple candidate Kumars. Yo, that's- They're nuts. fucking cool, but dude, get it right. I'm Harold. <laughs> I think this is the Walgreens where the security guard shot some homeless person. Oh, shoot. This one? Yeah, this one. Oh, Yo. Shit. They're shaking his bag. Oh, man, he stole Damn. everything. <laughs> Dude, he stole the king and stuff. Oh, my God. It's real. Damn, that was actually crazy. You're talking about that, the Walgreens that the security guard shot someone and yeah. boom, he punched in. <laughs> Something <laughs> searched. Yeah. Oh, man. Something's getting searched. Oh, man. You're going to steal? Own that you're a thief. 
right? Like if the guy wants to go steal some shit, like own it. Like you get caught, like I'm gonna, if I have a camera, I'm gonna put it in your face. Be a man, you're gonna steal some stuff, you're gonna get away with it. But if you get caught, like own, own that you're a thief, own that you're a criminal. What do you say to the people who are like, I'm stealing to feed my family? Uh, he's not. <laughs> They're not. Damn. But what if, what if in that case scenario? No, I think that yeah. the, the stacks and the reality and the data yeah. is that they're stealing handbags. They're stealing, I think the guy was stealing like electronics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there are free food kitchens all over the city. So I, I do not, I hate the argument because one, they're not stealing for their family. Yeah, yeah. They're stealing to get money to go buy some drugs. There are so many nice NGOs and food kitchens that will offer food and That's offer shelter. Facts. So I think like there's literally in SF, in LA, in California, billions of dollars going to feed homeless people in need. Yeah. I'm not cold hearted, but I'm a business person where I see where the money is allocated. There's plenty of resources going to these folks. And then you're going to hurt other small business owners. We're going to hurt Walgreens. Yeah. And, and I think the other counter argument I hear is, oh, it's all paid by insurance. It's like, no, insurance works at a certain point until everyone steals so much stuff that the company goes bankrupt and the Walgreens moves out of the neighborhood and there's no Walgreens or no corner store and it just spirals down into a death pit. I think a lot of people, like, people just don't understand how the world works. I think uh, instead of the calling the cops on that homeless guy though, they kind of let him just stay. I noticed they just took the stuff out and just kind of let him walk. I think that the policy in which you can steal up to $950 and it's not a felony, yeah is problematic. If you are a rational actor, which I think most humans are, I will steal up to $949 of stuff because they know they can get away with it. Yeah. And in a lot of these California prosecutors just won't prosecute anything that's under, a that's a misdemeanor, yeah, yeah. right? It's just like, they know that the judges aren't gonna put these people away. The cops don't wanna deal with it because they know that that's wasted paperwork. And then you allow that system to happen. So to me, it's like, I'm not trying to just throw people in jail and lock people up forever. Yeah. But it's clearly inappropriate to just let people steal with impunity up to nine hundred fifty dollars. So my, how do you think they came up with that number, nine, like nine hundred fifty or a thousand or whatever? I think it's good-hearted people that want the world to be a better place, yeah. and they have this idealistic vision that hey, don't put people away. They're just down on their luck people. But all those people that feel that good heart should walk through the small business owners who are going bankrupt in retail who cannot sustain because there's too much street crime. Like I think talk to the actual people that are dealing with this on a daily basis versus you're in Sacramento, you're in a limousine liberal gated community, which I think these people just like pontificate out from. Like you walk that and see how comfortable your wife is walking that street, yeah, yeah. seeing all those people stealing stuff. It's not comfortable. Yeah. Like, I don't think you want your mom or your <coughs> wife or your kids walking that street. Yeah. No way. I'll do a- Almond milk tea. Yeah. You like full sugar? Yeah, bro. We gotta give it 100%, bro. That's called diabetes in a bottle. <laughs> I go 25% sugar. So 25%, oh, why do you even get boba? Why do you even get this drink? <laughs> It's like he's just drinking milk, bro. That's just what it is. I'm drinking tea with milk. Okay. It's a milk tea. I used to go zero percent sugar. I, I feel diabetes crazy. going to my liver yeah. when I drink 100%. It's like, ooh. All right, thanks for watching, boys and girls. We're here to give away money for the best comments on our last episode together. We had almost 40,000 views. Thank you so much for the amazing comments. Johnny and I are reading them. Appreciate the thoughtfulness and the effort here. Yeah. Seriously, appreciate you guys for always supporting. Shout out to my fans, shout out to his fans. Uh, you know, without you guys, honestly, we can't do it. So really do appreciate you guys for taking the time out of your day to comment on a geek and an Asian gang member. I think the geek is more gangster, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> we're we're, we're flipping, and this guy's a Bible geek now. So. <laughs> I, I think we both do this out of fun, passion, just in some sense, giving back to you guys. So seriously. Uh, and I think the big thing I want to do is not just talk about it, let's be about it. So let's actually give dollars into your pockets here. So bat we have some Thai bat money, <laughs> but we'll give you some US dollars better for your pocket. So Johnny's gonna choose his favorite comment and I'll choose a favorite comment. We'll give you guys hundred bucks each. Noel Nelson, 6457, shout out to you. You commented a month ago. Definitely thank you again for 
you know, really listening in. Obviously, you heard the water and the, the you know, flowing water analogy. So appreciate you for that. Hundred bucks awesome. to you. I have to hit a, a thumbs up on that <clears throat> comment. Yeah. So yeah, DM my account, my team will verify, make sure you're not a scammer, and then we'll ship you 100 US dollars. And for me, I gotta choose my guy, Dixon Yamada 6969. Now Dixon, appreciate just following along. It's clear that you enjoyed this conversation. That's, that's really encouraging for, I think myself, I'm sure for you just to like see that it's not just like one episode that, gone, that, that goes viral, but just like all the work, all the ideas that we're putting out there yeah. that folks like yourself are, are picking up. So yeah. I actually, you know, noticed that you've commented on a number of my, my things. So love to figure out and, and learn a little bit about, about you and see how we might be able to work together or I can support what you're working on. So hit the DM and we'll, we'll get that sorted.